Evening. Evening. Um, I apologize. I didn't send it till this um, late morning. I sent the budget over electronically. Did it? Was everyone able to get it? Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a quick overview of Rockingham County. I represent, as a commissioner, uh, 17 towns and the one city of Portsmouth in Rockingham County, which is made up of 37 towns. Its, um, it's government is three commissioners, myself in this region, Tom Tom Burrell in the southern part, and uh, Kevin Coyle in the center part of Rockingham County. And we are the commissioners. We hold executive powers in Rockingham County. But the state representatives from those 37 towns make up the delegation. The delegation makes up the legislative body of Rockingham County, so they're the ones that actually set the um, tax rate. Um, with that said, just a quick overview of our budget. The good news was this year we had a 0.48% increase in our budget for a total budget of $81,086,953. Um, and the bad news is because we're doing some projects, revenues in the nursing home is uh, down by $5 million. So the overall tax impact to the towns is a 3.10% increase. But what I want to do is come over here. Hampton is the fourth largest payer to Rockingham County. And I thought it'd be nice for you to know exactly what we do with your money, and if you have any questions about it, to at least answer those. Um, so with our budget this year, I mean, Rockingham County provides a lot of services to the towns that people don't think of. Number one, we, um, by state RSAs, we're responsible for all the elderly in Rockingham County, whether they're in our nursing home or they go to another nursing home. And how that works is it's called categorical assistance. So someone from Rockingham County goes to a nursing home, whether it's in Maine or Massachusetts, we still have to pay a portion of it, right? And that makes up like $20 million of our budget. Then as well as the elderly, we, we have to house prisoners. So we have a, a jail, um, and the cost in our jail is roughly $100 a day to house an inmate. And with that, we have to include all medical as well as meals for them. Um, Along with the jail comes the county attorney's office, which prosecutes all felon, felony level cases in Rockingham County. And we're the second, we're actually the largest courthouse, so do the most work, because Hillsborough is the second, is the largest county, but they're split between two courthouses. Uh, we have a sheriff's department that transports prisoners, patrols streets, provides dis dispatch for 18 fire departments and 25 police departments in Rockingham County. Uh, we also have um, uh, the Brentwood uh, facility, the county complex, so we have an engineer and maintenance team that does that. Um, and between all that, we have over 650 employees in Rockingham County. So there's a finance office and an HR office with that. Um, last year's, or this year's budget, what we ended up doing was that included we negotiated seven union contracts with our correctional officers, sheriffs, maintenance, and um, legal assistants. Uh, so they all got their contractual raises, and we did a 2% increase across the board for all non-union workers in Rockingham County. Um, there was three new positions this year approved. Two of them are county attorney's office. Uh, Full-time attorneys would are going to start uh, in another couple of months because the state is switching over what's called felons first. So if someone is arrested in Hampton on a felony charge right now, it goes to your local prosecutor handles it until it gets handed up to Rock and, uh, up to the Superior Court. Now what's going to happen is it's automatically going to go to the county attorney's office, so we'll take that step out. Um, and then there's one full-time administrative assistant that's going to the county attorney's office as well because of the felons first program. So there's only three new positions. Um, our revenue, like I said, was down in the nursing home because we're doing a $12 million remodel at the nursing home. One whole wing of our nursing home was a little bit institutional. There was four beds in the room with no bathroom. Um, it, was, it was time for a remodel, uh, so what we're doing is those are being redone to two beds in a room with a common bathroom, each one. 
Uh, it was much needed, and then as well as that, would redoing two other floors in there. But the $12 million was made up of a $3 million bond, $8 million taken out of our fund balance, and $1 million increase on, on your tax rate. But that will be completed by spring of 2018. Um, and revenues of deed, uh, registered deeds, which brings in money to the county, they're, we're anticipating there'll be up 800000 in their revenues. And that pretty much takes up that. If you look at the budget itself, you'll see some increases under the delegation, which is made up of the state reps again. Uh, we had a fire training school for a long time at the Brentwood Drill Yard, which trained a lot of the firefighters in this area. Uh, turns out they were using a Class A foam that is now proven to be um, contaminating, and we have a contamination problem on our property. We have PFOAs, the same thing as um, St. Gobins in Merrimack, and the same thing that Pease is fighting as well. So we just found out about that this year, so we had to put some money in the budget to start. Could you explain what POFA is? Polyfluoral. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I should <laughs> so know it by now. It's a chemical. Say it. It's, it's, it's a bad chemical okay. that's kind of Teflon in water. Um, but it's the exact same thing. It's, it comes down to um, solvents that we use um, over at Peas, as well as foams that, was, that fire departments have used for years, Class A foams that they've used. Um, and unfortunately, it's a training facility, so they use lots of foam to train with it. Uh, no one knew it was contaminating, but we're working to get that cleaned up. Um, there's an increase in the treasurer's budget uh, because we gave him a salary increase for the first time in, I believe, uh, six years. Uh, county attorneys, because there's three new positions that we talked about earlier. The sheriff department, uh, because of the way we lease our payments, there was there's a bump this year in the, in the lease. Uh, the commissioners, um, our budget is up because of the projects that I talked about. We're doing a $12 million re, um, remodel, so that bumped our line up. Um, you'll see IT services that the budget went up, but if you look at other departments under IT, what we did was we consolidated. We had each department doing their own IT services and buying their own software, and obviously everything's cheaper by the dozen, so we combined it up. So that's why that looks up, but it's down in everyone else's budget. And uh, for human resources, for the first time, we're trying to get out of paper filing so that you can do your applications online, we can do our evaluations for employees online, and we can track um, raises and salary adjustments online. But the other thing we did with this year um, was the first time in 12 years we did a pay and salary study. And it was much needed to bring us up to standards on that. Um, I would ask if you have any questions. It was a kind of a quick overview. Start with, uh, okay, Rick. Uh, how much do the commissioners make? Uh, the commissioners make 18000 a year. Yeah, because just a few years ago it was 12000 uh, Not that long ago. Before my time, but I'm not sure when it went up. That what um, it is is the delegation sets the pay rates, uh, but I would state that Rockingham County doesn't have an administrator. We are actually working commissioners. Uh, all the other counties have an administrator. Rockingham does not have one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just say though, um, and maybe we, we could check it out. It was twelve thousand for for I believe many years. It was, um, and now it's eighteen thousand. I just wanted to point out that the board of selectmen, we've never raised them. <laughs> In the 15, the 12 years I've been here, in fact, it was more on the 12th year, it was, it's less today. Is that a motion? Just to throw that out. That would be very controversial. No, 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 I'm not suggesting that, but I'm just showing you how it works in this town and how it works there. I agree. I was a state rep before, and I got paid $200 for two years' service. And the delegation does their, you know, like I said, they're the legislative body. But it, it and it's set. an elected position, and this is what's, what must be happening. Elected officials must be getting more money, <laughs> just like the workers, I guess. Just throwing Anything that else? out there. Anything else? No. Mr. Bean. Uh, County government does an extraordinary job for uh, many of uh, those that are in need. Uh, and thanks for what you do up there. It's not an easy job. Uh, and 
and uh, we really appreciate it. You do a lot for people that are uh, senior citizens. You do a lot for folks uh, that um, are coming out of uh, uh, our law enforcement agencies, and uh, um, no one else is going to do it. So, so thank you for what you do. It's a beautiful facility, and uh, that you're reinvesting in up there in the uh, nursing home. So thank you. Appreciate it. I totally agree with that. Regina? Um, I have a question. So are you you're going to change your fiscal year end? Is that that's a definite now? Yes, that passed the legislative. Yeah. Okay. So what was happening before was we were our fiscal year was a calendar year, right? Yeah. And the problem with that is, to be honest, you're freshly elected in November, and then all of a sudden you're already through the budget process. Right. So the newly elected people have no say in the budget. You're kind of relying on people that have been either un that weren't elected or relying on someone else. Um, so we are switching to a uh, June through July fiscal year. And that's going to start coming. This our next budget cycle come November will be an 18 month budget to get us on that. Okay. Right. Um, there was some worries with towns of how we would build the towns. Right now, the way we build the towns out, we send you a bill in November. Right. So you have the whole year for that. Uh, our current plan is to keep it that way. We're not going to change anything. So you're not going to get a bill for 18 months. Okay. You you you're not you're going to get you're not going to see anything change yet, okay? Um, we we've talked about possibly going to a biannual billing, but it would be this it, it, again you would never be paying in advance. Uh, but that's that was only talked just to see on what we're doing. I failed to mention I don't know if you saw we are having hosting a meeting this Wednesday for all the town managers and select boards uh, to get a chance to sit down at a round table to talk about that possible scenario or anything else that Rockingham County can do for the towns. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Rusty? So you, you're right now your revenue is down from the nursing home. Correct. Um, is that a short-term thing you expect once yes. it gets we done? That. You're going to, because right now I'm sure you're, you're down <laughs> residents right now. We're, exactly, we're down 44 beds. Okay. We're down 44. We're, physically, that wing is shut down for 44 beds, so that's the, that's the difference. But when we reopen, because we're changing from four beds to room to two beds, we're going to be down 24 beds. But the difference is, we will have a nice facility that we can take private pay versus just you know um, indigent people. We could do rehabilitation services. Is there any is there any thought or discussion down the road for increasing your bed amount with through additions or? At this time, we're just trying to get our, like I said, it was kind of institutional, some of the places we had, and it was time to change that. We had a lot of land at Rockingham County that if the need ever rose, right now what we're fighting is Medicaid managed care. Uh, the, the state is trying to, we have to, they put it on the onus on county government to come up with a new model on how they're going to manage care. And if we don't do it, they're going to hand it to the insurance companies, and the insurance company is going to decide what happens with our residents. And no one, not any town, not any commissioner, not any legislator is going to be able to dictate where people go. And the insurance company is going to say, you're going to go over here or there, and it's going to take all everything out from the... So we're trying to work diligently with the um, legislative body to try and come up with a form of managed care. Thank you, Kevin. Fred, do you have anything you want to add, or...? No, I just make sure the check goes out of here All right. on time. <laughs> the only thing, if I could just add that I forgot to mention, is um, we do have a program with our trustees for the correctional. And they were here um, a couple of years ago shoveling hydrants in the dead of winter. Uh, that, current, that program is still current where at no cost of the town, short of feed them a, a, a pizza or a sub, we will bring a crew of anywhere from eight to ten prisoners with a correctional officer watch them to do any special projects. We have re-roofed a highway shed in Raymond. We built the highway shed in Auburn. We built a police station in Sandown. They just painted a building last week in Newton, New Hampshire. They painted the inside of the fire station in Kingston, New Hampshire. If you have any projects, I would recommend you get a hold of Major Dave Constantine at the correction or get a hold of me. And we could get a crew over here to do any special projects that you, you know, really don't do. The only thing that's going to cost you is the materials. Other than that, the labor is free, buying a sandwich, and you don't even have to watch them because it comes with the person. And we're in the process of securing a new vehicle for the corrections department so that we can send a road crew out just to pick up trash. 
and that would be just driving through Rockingham County, stopping at a road, picking up trash along the, and that wouldn't, you know, require anything out of the town. It's just that you'll see a van with a sign saying your tax dollars at work, and prisoners picking up trash. When, when is that round table again? This Wednesday at 5.30 at the county complex. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Kevin, appreciate your... Uh, if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to call us. I know people th kind of forget about county government, but we're there and we're willing to do anything we can. And we do have a central bidder, uh, a central purchaser. If the town wants to take advantage, East Kingston buys their electricity with us through their bidding. Um, you know, we all use copy paper, toilet paper, that stuff. We have a little bit bigger buying power. Um, so don't, don't forget about that. If, if there's anything we could do to help you on your central buying. Very good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Okay.